Now, the first thing you'll notice in Photoshop, on the left-hand side, you have the Tools menu. Now, this contains a lot of different tools that you're predominantly going to be using throughout editing your photographs. Now, as you can see, when I hover over the tools, they actually highlight, and if you hover over long enough, they'll actually, a text icon will appear with the name of the tool and also a letter in brackets to the right of the name. Now, that letter in brackets simply represents the keyboard shortcut to getting to that tool. So in this case, if I was to get to the crop tool by uh, just using the keyboard, I could hit C on the keyboard and that would automatically activate that particular tool. Tool. Now the other thing you'll notice with the tools menu is some of the tool icons have this little um, black arrow icon in the in the right bottom hand corner. Now this simply indicates that there are more tools located in a drop down menu underneath this particular tool. So if I was to hold down on uh, one of these tools, you'll notice here underneath the lasso tool, there's also the uh, polygonal lasso tool and also the magnetic lasso tool. So there are actually a lot more tools in the tools menu that simply aren't displayed uh, visually to you uh, up front. So it's just something to take note of that as you're actually editing your photos, there are actually uh, a variety of different options in the tools menu that you can actually utilize. And we'll get to that as we progress through this course. Now, as you actually select tools, you'll notice up the top underneath the main menu, which is here, that there is an options menu. Now, this options menu actually changes according to which particular tool that you actually choose. So as I switch through the tools, you'll notice that that actually changes. Now, according to the tools menu and what options you have set in the tools menu, they can actually, they'll actually change the performance of the actual tool that you're using. So in this particular case, I've selected the brush tool and the options that are available to me up here are the sizing of the actual brush, whether you want to choose in a particular size in pixels or the hardness of the outside edges of the brush. You also have options like the opacity and the flow of the brush. So that's affecting how the brush tool actually performs when you're using it. So you just want to make sure that you take this uh, into account when you're actually using these tools that you have your settings set up correctly. And we'll, we'll take a look at the types of settings that you can implement using uh, all these different types of tools. Now, above the options menu, you'll notice a series of different icons. Now, the first icon simply is a shortcut to Adobe's bridge. The second one is a shortcut to Mini Bridge. So if I was to click on that, you'd notice that Mini Bridge would start up on the right hand side here as a panel. Now, along with that, we have uh, a couple of other options regarding, say, rulers and guides that you can set straight from this little uh, menu here, as well as magnification settings and also. Uh, workspace settings with regards to actually arranging documents. So if I had multiple documents open, you could see here that they've actually got different grid patterns according to how, uh, you know, the type of uh, workspace that you actually want to work in. So if I had multiple documents open, I could set them up accordingly uh, really quickly just by selecting one of these. So I could have two images up side by side, or I could have four images up side by side. So that is really useful uh, instead of trying to rearrange them yourself, uh, and, like just like in previous versions of Photoshop, if you had multiple files open, you'd have to actually rearrange them yourself with the mouse accordingly. And if you change the magnification size or, or whatnot, they'd end up in different positions and they just, it would just be quite uh, unuser friendly. But with this particular drop down, it makes things extremely quick to actually rearrange all of your windows within Photoshop. Now, the other area of Photoshop that you're going to be using quite a lot is the panel section that are located on the right hand side of Photoshop. So as you can see here, um, I'm in the essentials working space and I have all the default uh, panels that are currently set up for me. Now, there are a lot of different panels according to the different types of um, uh, features and adjustments and, and whatnot that you're using in Photoshop. And to find them, what you do is you go to the Photoshop menu up in the top left hand corner, select window, and you'll notice just here that you have 3D action adjustments, etc. So you actually have quite 
a lot of different panels according to the different types of tasks that you're going to be performing in Photoshop. And this is simply where you turn them on and off by checking a particular uh, panel. Now panels are, are really very useful and as I said you're going to be using them quite a lot in this particular course and in photo editing generally. Um, you can move them around just by dragging on them, uh, grab, picking them up and dragging them across you know, your window accordingly. You can also resize them quickly. So you know you can place them wherever you want in t in terms of your own personal preferences as uh, you know how you actually want to lay out your working space. Now the other thing to take note of with regards to panels is they have not only shortcut icons here but they have a drop down menu. So if you go to the top right hand corner you'll notice this little icon here if we click on it you'll see a range of uh, menu items for this particular panel so they are specific to the layers panel that I'm currently on here and every panel will have a set of different options now these particular options you can actually find also some of them located and duplicated in the actual um, Photoshop menu that's located up in the top left hand corner. So if I was to go to layers, I could find, you know, duplicate layer and a range of other different options here that just happen to also be located under here. But by having them also in the panels um, menu, it does allow you to um, access those options quickly without having to go through a range of different um, you know drop down menus in order to get to them so it is very useful and um, it also has some options that just aren't available in the main menu itself now you can simply add your panels back to their um, snap grid just by ho hovering over them as you can see here so that's just jumped back into its original position so there are a lot of different panels um, that you can use and we're going to go through the majority of them and how they can benefit your workflow. Now there's also another area that you'll notice when you open an image up in the left hand bottom corner. Now it shows the magnification which you can actually set according to what you actually want. Um, so you can set a specific magnification value. It also gives you a little drop down menu here that you can actually change and allocate to different um, settings and they'll display according to whichever one you choose. So in this case if I was to actually choose say document profile you'll notice that this now displays the actual color profile for this particular document. And once again, you can set it back. So this just gives you a sort of a, um, a glimpse of what uh, options or, or what settings you've actually got set for your particular photograph. Um, so that, that is very useful as well to you. Now finally, we have the main Photoshop menu. And this is where you find everything that you ever need within Photoshop. Now as you can see, it's quite in depth and there are a lot of different menu items. Uh, but don't get too worried about it because I'm going to highlight the particular menu items that you need to pay particular attention to. So that's a brief overview of Photoshop's interface and workspace. Now in the next video, we're going to take a look at what are the types of file formats you should concentrate on when saving your photographs. If you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and of course, please share it with your friends. If you want to get even more awesome resources to kick ass with Photoshop, plus you want to get the stuff that I just can't put inside my videos, come on over to thephotographychallenge.com and sign up for email updates. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next time.